Hi everyone. So I've been asked quite a few times about how to <coughs> combine your stencils. So here we've got our vintage bauble and then we've got our bows stencil as well that we've combined together and, and embossed them both. So I'm going to run through very quickly how we do this. And we're going to do something similar to this little card here so we finish it off and not just leave it empty. So the very first thing that you need to do is ascertain where your bow wants to go on your bauble so the first thing to do is put your bauble in place and again we've used a little bit of the removable adhesive on the back as you can find on the website and the same with the bow so i've chosen this bow here that we're going to use so basically i'm going to decide then where i want this bow to go so i'm going to take it about there let's say about there like that and then just with a little pencil all we want to do is just mark this little area here so we can just put that back in place in a second. So we can take this off. Okay, and we can see clearly here where our little pencil lines are for the tail of our little bow. So then this needs to come off because the bow is the first thing that you need to emboss. So I'm just going to make sure there's no adhesive on there. And as you can see, this just rubs off. So it's a fabulous adhesive. Okay, and then the first thing we're going to do is emboss this bow. So I'm going to line this back up because that's exactly where we want our bow to be. Generally, when you finish this, you can't actually see that there's any pencil lines on there at all. If you want to, you could just rub them out later on. It's entirely up to you. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to switch on this light box because the light is not very good. If you haven't got a light box, you can literally just take this to a window and hold it up at the window while you do this. I'm hoping that you can see this very clearly. You can see the bow that we're going to emboss through here. So I'm going to take a larger ball tool and then some wax paper. And the wax paper will just help the ball tool just to glide over the top of this cardstock when we emboss it. Otherwise, it can be a little bit scratchy or it can feel a little bit scratchy and it can be quite unpleasant. So just roughly rub over like so. So I'm going to use sort of a wider ball tool. I'd say this one's probably about three to four mil, but to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. But it's easier if you just push this cardstock gradually into your, into your stencil rather than rushing and trying to use a very, very fine embossing tool straight away. So just run around the outside of your line of your stencil, just like that. And then we're going to take a smaller embossing tool now. So now we've sort of found that line, we can take a smaller embossing tool and really crisp up that line. So this is something I love about the, um, the old fashioned method, if you will, because actually this is very, very hard. Well, you can't actually do this as far as I know on a machine. This is something that you can really only do by hand mixing stencils. So you can take one bit from one and one bit from another. Okay. So I'm just pushing that, making sure we've got into all of those lines. I'm going to turn this off because I know it's not as easy to see, but you can see the nice embossed lines that we've got there now. So if I turn this back over, before we take this off, I'm just going to add a little bit of ink to this. So I'm going to take my dry baby wipe now. Something I do is a bit of cheating really because I don't really want to have to mask anything out. So what I do, if I know I'm going to be using blue on my bauble, I'm going to straight away, I'm going to use this straight into my bow because then I don't need to mask the bow out. If you did want it a different colour, your background, then you could just mask this bow out by doing what we did the other day, where stenciling through your stencil and then cut a paper mask out exactly the same way you would if you were stamping, okay? So once we've done this here now, we can then take this off. Okay, so this is just gonna come off the background like that. And there you have your little embossed bow. So with a clean finger, I'm just gonna wipe that off. It's very unusual for me to have a clean finger. Those who see me at shows know I never have clean fingers. And then what we're gonna do is pop this bauble stencil back onto the front like this. So basically you're only gonna emboss the bits that we can see here. So you're not gonna go into this bow. So if I position that there like that, and then we open up this card, and unfortunately I'm just gonna to have to switch the light box on again. And I want you to be able to see what I can see here. So we can see the shape of the bauble behind there. So if I just take my wax paper again, and we're just gonna rub over this line here. And we're gonna to want to sort of stop wherever that bow is. So you're not gonna get a lot of that topper on show here, which is fine, because it's supposed to be covered by the bow. 
and then we're going to do exactly the same thing again so i'm going to take my ball tool and we're just going to stop so where you get the embossing from the bow we're just going to stop and we're roughly going to go around now remember if you haven't got a light box don't think that you can't do this because you can just take this up to your window and even if it's just to get the basic outline of your design that would be absolutely fine so again just here and i'm going to stop just where my bow is and i think that is probably going to be all we're going to get in there i don't think i'd position this in the best place possible but i don't really think it matters too much as long as we've got something there so we can see there is actually a topper so let's turn this off now and what i'll do is we'll get this out of the way and then we can just carry on with our design now i can't remember whether i actually crisp that up or not so i'm going to do that again with a small one so let's just go back in and just make sure that we've got that nice and crisp with our small embossing tool just there like that okay so there's our little design can you see here i'm just going to see if i can put a little bit just there okay right so now we've embossed that and it's all nice and raised we can then put our little design in so i'm going to add a little bit of color to this but we're first going to stamp our little tree path tree path from the pine panorama so we're going to use the gray for this and we used this one yesterday as well but it's a lovely little stamp and laura's done some beautiful work where she's turned this into a little pathway as well so think about using this outside of christmas as well so we're going to pop that one just at this side here and then we're going to pop the other one at the other side so of course your paper is sorry your cardstock is actually raised into this stencil now which i think actually makes it a lot easier to stamp with so you can get to the cardstock a lot easier so this one we're just going to sort of eyeball this and we're just going to stamp it just about there if you don't get these exactly the same height again it doesn't really matter that much because we're going to finish this off in a minute anyway. Okay, so there's our two little stencil, oh, those two little stamps in place. So I'm going to put my river bank across here. So we want to sort of be creating this bit here. So the sort of the horizon line. So a little bit of removable adhesive on the back of this. And this is an old uh, template that we've used before. And I'm just going to pop that about there because it doesn't exactly line up but again it really really doesn't matter so you can see what i mean because i'm going to use blue up here anyway now i don't really need to worry about covering up that bow we're going to just keep it nice and subtle in that background so if i just take my blue and we're just going to start to blend into this card and again we don't really need to avoid that area there but what would be nice if we just put a little bit on that topper just up there like that and just so we can just see a little bit of that blue just behind there like that so i'm just doing this top bit first and then what we'll do we'll just turn this around and we'll do that that horizon line so i'm not i'm trying not to put too much color on that bow because we don't want it to be sort of a deeper shade of blue either so just along here now And you can just avoid any bits that are snowy. Okay, so let's use a little bit of peony. So that was Atlantic, which you all know is probably my favourite colour. It's my most used colour at least. But with this peony together, they're just a beautiful combination. So it's a really lovely dusky look. Okay. So there's our skyline in place. So what I'm going to do is turn this mask the other way around and we've got a sort of uneven edge here. And this is where we're going to stamp our little girl. So she's going to go there like that. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of grey just to edge that. So just along the edge here, like so. And then what we're going to do is reflect this colour back into here. So I'm going to start colouring 
from the actual skyline here so just above it so take off some of that color and i don't like this as dark so we keep this a little bit paler and again i'm just avoiding those snowy areas to the side uh, but if you want to you could make a little mask and mask those out again entirely up to you and we're leaving this little mask in place here as well just while we work so we need a little bit of the pink on here and then i'm going to darken this up a little bit so let's just get a little bit of the peony and do the same thing so i'm getting rid of some of that first and then we're just going to pull that down and i'm going to start at the top and blend my way down so it's that little bit paler when it gets down to the bottom like that okay so just at the top and a look, just so it matches this bit here, I'm just going to add a little bit of the grey. But again, I don't want too much of this. I'm just going to just darken up those edges. Just there, like that. Okay, so there's our little design here so far. And now what we've got to do is stamp our little girl. So we've got our little girl right in the middle of here. So let's get her. So we'll keep her with the umbrella because I think it's quite fitting. It works quite well as a little Christmas card, this one. And I've had a bit of a, a breeze here lately as well. And she is just going to stamp right on this middle bit here. So because she's black again and our background is grey, we should get a really nice comparison between the two. So she's going to look right in that foreground. And the grey should just go right into the background there. Okay, let's get that off. And there she is. And then we're going to do the same. We're going to put a little bit of grass just along this. It just sort of darkens that line without me having to draw a line. So just a little bit of the grass. Just there like that. And then what we can do, if we want, we could put a few little reflections. I'm going to take that off now. And again, you've seen me do this a lot. We're going to use that little bit of paper just to create those snowy hills here. Okay, and then we're just going to line that up as well. I'm going to put a little bit of shading just there. You could use a pen if you want, entirely up to you. And let's just put a little bit more just in the bottom. There's a little bit more black on there than I anticipated, but never mind. So along here, I'm just going to do a couple of trees. And we're just going to reflect them back. So let's go back to our grey. Like so. Let's center that up a little bit. And we'll just put a couple of these just in the background here. So let's just off stamp that a little bit. And then we'll just go about there where the little girl is. And then normally if I was doing this I would reflect those back. Um, back with using acetate but to be honest because they're not symmetrical but fairly symmetrical so that you wouldn't notice it wouldn't really matter if we just use a little bit of this so I'm just going to take off a little bit of ink and we're just going to ink up those tips I'm going to take a tiny bit of that colour off and then we're just going to pop those in there because honestly I think you can get away with that in fact that one's very pale so I've just took a little bit more colour off as long as you've got something in there take a bit of that color off and then just about there just so you've got that little bit of a reflection just in that distance there so what we're going to do is just edge all the way around here now so i'm going to go back to my gray and we're just going to work just around that stencil there just so that when we take this stencil off you've got a lovely solid line running all the way around just so that stands out really nicely. And obviously we're going to avoid that bow area at the top there. Okay. So now let's take this off. So you will have some of the, the uh, blue residue just running behind there. But can you see now how we've got, just got those stencils just merged together at the top like that. So your bow is now sort of sitting on top of your bauble. And then all that's left to do is finish off with our white highlights so i'm going to go across here i'm going to add some little highlights to this just where we might have got a bit of uh too dark a blue there so i'm just going to highlight this so 
and then we're just going to start to add some little bits of snow and some highlights on our little stamp here especially around her hair here And if you've never seen me do um, this little girl before, sometimes I like to take or not ink up the brolly in a hand because sometimes it's really nice if you want to swap them for balloons for a little party or little party invitations. She'll be flying kites. She could be doing a lot of things, this little one. So she's a firm favourite. And we're just adding a little bit of snow into those trees just by scribbling that in. And in this water, I just find if you take some sort of not com sort of solid lines but just sort of little dashes so it just looks like the light of any light that's left is literally just catching on the surface of that water so sometimes these are a bit tricky to use when the ink's still a little bit damp on top so that's why i'm just sort of wiping that off onto the um, the side here so we're going to put some snow in this now and again three sizes so we're going to go small, medium and large. And make sure you've got some in front of your little, well, whatever your subject matter is in your card as well. And then we're just going to dot this. So I'm just going to dot all over. bit of sparkle so I'm just going to colour in with my glue pen just around these little areas here so just into that snow like so and then again just on your water here as well so just some little sort of again doesn't have to be solid lines and doesn't have to be perfect and I'm just going to do some little bits just down here and a little touch of glue in that sky and a nice thing I find to do is just to glue, put glue over your, your little topper here. Oh, sorry, over your bow. And then what we're going to do is just add some sparkle to that bow as well. But you can see here, you've sort of got embossing on embossing, which is lovely. So it's sort of double lifted, really. Okay, so just beware, this is going to sort of stick to all the little bits of residue of glue on that other side as well but that will just rub off later. So I'll just get rid of some of that there. And there we have her. So that's your, your double embossing up here. So you've got one stencil on top of another. So I hope that helps. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye.